Hello, welcome back to Turd Towns, the channel that shines a light on the lesser known places in the UK. And I know, normally I say, you're having a laugh if you want me to talk about Bath. But today's video will show you the other side of Bath that tourists don't normally get to see. We were trialling a few new things in this video in preparation for the next Turd Towns episode, and this is one video that I alluded to last year. So we're off to Bath in Somerset. It's a small city which is known for its tourism and being very posh. According to Rightmove, the average house price in the city this year was almost £600,000. With prices like that, you could be forgiven for thinking that the whole of Bath fits the posh narrative. There is another side to Bath that you won't ever see unless you go looking for it. Whilst this is a true statement that every UK city has its good parts and its bad parts, it's a bit different here. Nearly all of Bath is posh, and then there is one huge estate where you'll find over 60% of the city's social housing. Other small pockets of social housing exist throughout Bath, but like I said, it's very small. Snow Hill is an interesting estate. It's very compact and it's near the city centre. It also contains the only high-rise council flat in the city. Considering how rich this city is, you think they could do a bit better than this pathetic excuse for a park for the little kiddies. As I said, this estate is small. Our focus today is on Twerton, which isn't small. It's located on the southwest side of Bath. Fortunately for Bath Council, Twerton is completely hidden behind the raised railway viaduct and the average person would never notice that it even exists. Conveniently, there's no train stop in here either, so it seems like a waste of time. Doesn't it seem silly in a large impoverished neighbourhood in a city which is heavily pushing a green agenda to not have a stop here? They also have clean air charges in Bath, which admittedly doesn't affect many people, but I would wager that those rules will become stricter in the future. So give Twerton some damn infrastructure. Twerton has been built using the same bath stone as the rest of the city. I've definitely visited uglier places. But the stones are grimy and uncared for. It destroys what could be fairly nice. Nobody has ever heard of Twerton except for possibly one reason. The football at Twerton Park. This ground is large and it's in a nice central position. It seems to be a hub of activity for Twerton. It's home to Bath City Football Club, who aren't very good, but Bristol Rovers had to ground share here for a decade between 86 and 96. This means that Bristolians have fond memories of Twerton. It was loved for its chippy and pubs. Gasheads may want to look away now though. Many of the things which were once loved are now dead. The chippy is closed down. The full moon pub is closed down. The co-op has been sat empty since 2017. The high street now consists of the most pointless parade of shops in existence. It does have a Boots chemist though, which seems to mainly be kept in business to hand out subscriptions of methadrone. Twerton existed before World War II, but the place had to rapidly expand due to the post-war housing crisis, so large parts of Twerton were built after the war. In the 80s, 24% of houses in Bath were social. Now that's down to just 3.4%. That is a shocking statistic, and it shows how rapidly Bath has transformed. Social housing rarely gets built anywhere, but this has been worse than usual in Bath. The waiting list for houses in Bath is long, with around 5,000 households waiting on the list. We did manage to find some social flats being built on the far outskirts of the city, but nothing seems to be changing in Twerton. The main social housing provider is Curo. They built a huge waterside building to run their operations from, but for some reason didn't want the building to actually be in Twerton. Curo aren't popular with Twerton residents, with many complaining about the state of the properties and issues such as mould and leaks. Others complained about the amount of drug use in the area. One person who didn't wish to speak on camera discussed the issues of working in Twerton. He claimed that last week he had a knife pulled on him as a thief tried to take a crate of Strongbow. Multiple people told us about fights taking place on Twerton High Street three times a week. Everybody that we spoke to around Twerton said the main issues were drug addicts and Curo. We met local resident Bryn, who kindly took time out of his day to talk us through the issues of living in Twerton. All of the developments along the Lower Bristol Road, everything, is all under Cura. Right. Right, well, that, that uh, what's his name, the, the, the head of Curo, um, he's a direct descendant of Mussolini. He was one of the money launderers for the mafia that was thrown out of Italy that the didn't get put in prison with yeah. 500 others. Yeah. And David Cameron, went to the American Supreme Court and begged them to drop the charges against HSBC yeah. and they paid 18.7 billion. He then handed over all the public housing to them for less than a penny in the pound. 
Now, they haven't done any work on this building. I've been here 29 years. Yeah. I've had endless floods. And right out the other end of this building, there's one door on the side. You go around there with that, and you'll see they, they moved the bus stop from here. And despite me, they put it right outside my bedroom window, which is a fire escape window, got to be cleared of the road. Five fatalities inside three years and they still wouldn't move it but they widened the path three times making it a bottleneck if you go along there now you'll see it's a public toilet some bloke last night dropped trout spread his cheeks and shit all down the wall under my mate, kitchen mate, window mate. they've been trying to take my home off me yeah now do you think i'm mentally unstable i don't know you no. but i've got an iq <laughs> north of 180 yeah I've convicted them, they've denied me access to the courts, and there is no solicitor in the land. The moment you mention Curo, we're very sorry, but on this occasion we're unable to assist you in this matter. Mm. Police, council, they'll take on any case, but because mine's over 500 million in losses, business and everything, they won't give me any legal access, and now they're trying to take my home off me. I'm the last tenant left here, and when I moved in 29 years ago, it was people in their 70s that had lived here their lifetimes. There was the panty thief of Old Bill Park. That was the punchline. <laughs> Strikes again. Yeah. And they were after him for four years. His name was <laughs> And he was a multiple rapist and pedophile. Taxi driver. When they arrested him, they found 400 odd pairs all around the boot of his car stuffed in there. And he was wearing kids' underwear and women's underwear. <laughs> oh. And I was in the process of buying my home, but I was being kept away. So when I come back, they put a bus stop outside the window and a pedophile next door. Along the back there, the land, you'll see the tarmac. He had an army of jippos hurling abuse at me, kicking my dogs, everything. Got two fat Labradors that he rescues. And if you go along the back there, you'll see the tarmac. They put tarmac straight under the mud. I raised so much money around here and I was blacked out by Bath City Council, Bath City Football Club as well. I did a deal with them and for eight years I had 50 season tickets oh, wow. for the kids. This building was condemned unfit for human habitation in 2004 and I challenged the judge where they were blackmailing me to settle out of court or else. I, I just wanted to end it all. They cemented garden slabs. Now, if you go in a garden centre in this weather, and you pick up a garden slab, got paper on the back of it, and they? The mottled slabs? Yeah. And that paper is like paper mache, it's filthy. They cemented that on with shag pile carpet and took away the artwork that I'd done on the fireplace. I'd spent ages <laughs> with gold and inlay and everything, all paint sprayed and lacquered, but it was on heat proof enamel paint, yeah. on fireproof paper, on, and they just sort of wood threw it away and they just tore it up. Um, the double glazing they put in, they tried to bill me 10 grand for three windows. Said it's a, it's a pro rat, it's pro, if it was a two bedroom, a three bedroom house, or a flat, it's the same. That was thrown out. I've had my windows broken more than 30 times at a cost of more than 25 grand over the last 10 years, uh, 20 years, sorry, and they haven't done any repairs. They put in a new sink in the flat above me, but the trap, wouldn't right so they siliconed a trap under the sink now you know as well as me hot and cold water on a plastic the expand contract fell off yeah of course it were yeah five months they didn't put a new trap he was there with the sink bolt now his daughter and that and his his single dad and his daughter but but the the missus have got put away in an eye sort of thing so they were dubious and going through life but the daughter left the friggin' tap run and they went away for the weekend. Oh. I called them on an emergency line. We'll get right on that. That was a year ago. They still haven't come round. Right. See, I'm in the charity shop being flight tipping all their crap. They were they had their license taken away because they had just the what they did, Curo brought the area down and moved all the druggies into the area. Boots chemists went into the shops there that was a tile in centre and they took no planning permission, but they moved everyone south of Blooming Julian Road on this side of town. Every methadone addict and that comes along. Now, if you go to the end of the building, go round to the right, there's a drain under my kitchen window. I caught a load of druggies coming out, nicking all the metal. They come out with sacks and they were pulling off copper pipe and all the pipes along the back here were lead and they were snapping them all off. And I chased them away 
but not until after they had wrecked my boiler howlings and everything else. Now that was reported by Timbo in 2004. You look at there, you see? Pipes just, no pipes coming out the wall. It just leaks down the wall. Oh yeah. But here's what they done. Mud and sewage and crap everywhere. That is covered in grease where someone was puking. I opened the door and they fell into the flat. It is all day, every day. Morning, noon and night, they come round from the bus stop, blank walls there, drain them over there, and they piss and shit there. But I get it all the time. But that drain is blocked. Yeah. So if I bleach that down, I mean, if you, when this dries out and you look, you'll see it's all bleached running out to the road. I must have used about 5,000 gallons of industrial bleach. I did a designer interior in here, and it was valued at 350 grand, estimated. Now it's worth about 35 according to Cura, well, that's and they're trying to take it off me for non-payment of service charges, which they were convicted of. I went to court with a photo, and one of the bills, if you're given a bill for 50 grand, or 30 grand, or 20 grand, and you prove it's fake, the whole thing's dismissed. That's the law of the land. It stood since World War I. They sent me a bill for 980 quid for painting my front door and painting the door frame. I took a photo and I said, look, that is a handmade by me, Luan, Philippine mahogany, varnished door. Does it look like it's ever been painted? UPVC door frame. How can they bill me 900? You can buy a handmade door and frame for less than that. You can. And the judge said, no reference to previous cases. And they found me guilty and fined me four grand. Because they all work for Kyoro. The flood came through blew the electrics, blew everything, blew the computers, and I haven't got the money to repair them and so on, the hard drive's gone. You have to feel for people like Bryn. He was clearly a well-known and popular figure in the Twerton community, but where does he fit in now with today's society? How far will he be pushed before he finally leaves Twerton? Is he getting the help he should be getting, or is he being left to fend for himself? And I don't usually talk about conspiracy theories, but who could possibly be responsible for the turds down his drain? Let me know what your theory is of what happened here in the comments. Thanks to the issues highlighted by Bryn, it was hard to believe we're in a posh city like Bath. Twerton is one of the few areas of Somerset which faces genuine poverty. A third of children here are living below the poverty line. Twerton residents can also expect to live seven years fewer than the rest of Bath City. Over 20% of residents in Twerton suffer from a disability, of course, a much higher figure than the rest of Bath. 31% of residents here have no qualifications at all, so it's hard to make something out of yourself. Walking round, it's hard to believe that the glitz and the glamour of the Royal Bath Crescent is just a nine minute drive away from here. What we liked about Twerton was that everybody seemed to know each other, at least during the day it was friendly here. I walk out of my front door in my hometown and nothing. But here residents are often met by shouts of hello Mary, how are you today? Nobody seemed to be alone for long. Twerton is far from the most dangerous place I've visited on this channel, but that's not the story I'm trying to tell here. It shows how differently 6,000 odd people live in the world famous city of Bath. The gulf between the rich and the poor, the have and the have nots. People in the poorest 10% of the UK live just an 8 minute car journey from 4 million pound mansions. I bet they don't have people puking against their wall. I bet they don't have water leaking through their ceiling and they probably don't even know what a curo is. They probably think it's a type of Spanish delicacy. With hard work, you can change your fortunes, but if you're born in Twerton, you have to battle hurdles and obstacles that make everything so much tougher for you. Twerton is a place that Bath would rather forget existed, keep it hidden behind the railway and let it fend for itself. It's hard to imagine Twerton without the football club, it really is the beating heart of the community. Across the road from Bryn's block of flats, Bath City are desperate to renovate their tatty ground. They proposed a new stand, new flats, student accommodation, new shops, and a complete regeneration of Twerton High Street. Everything would have been changed, the whole area would have been improved, all without removing the beating heart of Twerton. In 2020, the council unanimously voted against the exciting plans, and Twerton has once again been forgotten. So as I said, we're trying out a couple of new things with some new tools available to us. For the next episode of Turtowns, I'm a bit torn between North Wales and County Durham, but if you have a better suggestion, let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe to help Turd Towns thrive.